We have very solid proof that organic agriculture, at least in the Indian village context, is superior in productivity and profitability to chemical agriculture. The data has shown in village after village after village, in farmer group after farmer group after farmer group, that they actually are more profitable when they are doing organic agriculture correctly, using the best practices known to humans to reduce or eliminate the use of chemical fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides To improve the soil health, in Prosperous Pani Foundation competition, we made this vermicompost here. Till the 2019, we were using chemicals, uh, fertilizers in our agriculture. When we enter into the Pani Foundation competition, then we got the importance of vermicompost and started using this vermicompost and not the chemical fertilizers. So you can see these uh, worms are here. There's so many worms are here and it is made by the cow dung and fodder which has got wasted. Welcome to Maharashtra, India. I was here three years ago with Dr. Avinash Pol visiting two villages that had done very well in the Pani Foundation's Water Cup competition and I saw the incredible work that these villages had done to solve their water problems and recharge their groundwater table. The Pani Foundation facilitated the Water Cup competition, which enabled thousands of villages to literally fix their water problems. The work of the Pani Foundation is transforming landscapes, regenerating ecosystems, regenerating water tables at a scale and a speed greater than any other project that I've seen on the planet. Pem Giri is a very special place. I feel so blessed that I had the chance to visit Pem Giri. The welcome that we got at Pem Giri, I, I don't know if I will ever have another day like that again in my life. Oh boy, look at that, Chili's. Nancy's shoes on. My wife and I were brought onto a bullock cart and paraded through the village with lines of children dancing, old men dancing, women dancing, everybody dressed up. And then they had us come and we danced in the middle of the circle with everybody. And then they had me get on the microphone and they told me what to chant. And then they brought us through their temple and they had created this rangoli on the floor to welcome us that was this absolute work of art that showed the story of their village. Then they brought us around to honor the various deities. They put the turbans on and the scarf, and then they marched us up. They had children and people come up that had practiced speeches in English, and they gave these speeches in English to just to talk their little hearts out to the best of their ability. Now, now we are focusing on rainy seasons uh, for hurry, hurry crops. We would like to make living fertilized soil with organisms in your gardens. There's also a banyan tree in Pemigiri. This has been mapped as the second largest banyan tree in India. It covers about an acre and a half. And in the middle of this banyan tree is this temple that is built into the center of the tree painted and ornate with all these different deities and shrines. And it was an otherworldly experience getting to look through here. I asked 
how old is this village? And Swapnil, the young man who's showing me around, he's like, old. Uh, what we do know is that this banyan tree was mentioned in some texts 500 years ago. He's like, that's the closest sort of age that we have that we know this village was in existence. But these villages have been in existence in the same places for possibly millennia. The unbelievable thing is that we were told that we were the first foreigners to ever visit Pamgiri village. Even through the times of British colonization, no foreigners ever made it here. And the welcome we got certainly made it feel like that. And then we got to go around, we got to see the work. We are here in Pemgiri. This Pemgiri village is covered by so many mountains. And the fort, Shagad Fort, is situated at the middle of this village. We are on the top of the watershed of this village. Before the 2019 Water Cup, this land was very barren land. We have to take tankers for water, to drink the water for the animals also. And uh, there were no forest animals also here because no water. When the land was barren here, the rain falls here, the water goes to the river directly. But we stop that water, we slow down the speed of that water and we percolated that water into the soil. And it's now going very slowly, slowly. We treated this uh, entire watershed on the all mountains we are seeing here. Uh, this Pemgiri village is covered by all sides from the mountains. We have structured all the various types of percolating structures from top to bottom. And I'm going to show you the watershed structures which are happened on these mountains. We started this CCTs. CCTs are uh, continuous counter trenches. Those LBS are also here. LBS is the loose boulder structure. Small stones keep uh, 10 in that uh, small valley. So that with the water, the soil also stops there. And the uh, water gets percolated in that soil also. Up to that gabion structure, so with the big stones, we have made the gabions here. And you can see here the Nala burnt. We started the labor work here with the villagers. There were so many thousands of villagers who were participating in the, uh, this work. And in just 45 days of work, we recharged our water table. Uh, so now uh, we are very prosperous. We are doing best agriculture uh, practices here because of the water. They are drawing their water from the shallow surface groundwater table. In most of these villages, they either never had bore wells, bore wells which are deeper wells that are, that are tapping in through bedrock layers to deeper aquifers, or they have banned bore wells altogether. So what they're doing is, they're recharging the water table in these hillsides, coming down and in the foothills and then down the valleys, and the water is coming to the surface in the surface groundwater table. But when you have your agriculture that is fed by deeper bore wells, then the work that you're doing in the immediate surface watershed does not necessarily reflect in the recharge of a deeper bore well. So the effects of their water harvesting structures are much more evident and tied in directly to the location within the aquifer that they're getting their water from. It's a big advantage to how these uh, these villages can recharge their water tables so directly. Remember, they're doing the work in 45 days of the Water Cup competition. That's when they did all of the recharge structures, and then the first monsoon rains after that, they're recharging their water tables, and now here we are. We've seen three monsoon seasons since 2019 in most of these villages that I've visited. So three seasons of rainfall recharging in all of these structures, and the groundwater table at this point has reached a state of what you'd say permanent abundance. This year was a good monsoon year. They had a, a higher than average rainfall. And what the villagers told me is, is that one year of higher than average rainfall recharging this aquifer would last them through two years of drought. That was the amount of water storage that they were creating within their system.
we have planted many saplings on this mountain. At least 300 acre of the area, we have planted the trees here. When people have their birthday, or they come here with their friends and plant the saplings. When there is any ceremony, people come and plant saplings. By this way, this village is growing many trees here. When Pani Foundation's training we are taken, then we got to understand the science. If we plant the trees, many trees at uh, plateaus of the mountains, and then rain will come. Where there are the trees in the mountains, in the valleys, there is a rain only. Oh, villagers are seeing that. Where there are the many trees, there is a too much of the oh, rain coming. So we have to plant many trees so that rain will come. After planting many saplings and uh, trees grown, we have seen many animals here. People walk in the morning from this road. They saw the tiger here. Many times saw various types of birds. Uh, the chameleon, green chameleon. Uh, they are seen on the road and they don't fear it. Animals get known that these uh, had been planted by these peoples. Oh, the animals know that you planted the, tr the forest and so they are respectful yeah. of you? These are the old tanks on the Port Shagar. And this tank filled of waters because of the this uh, slanting area here. And the water comes actually uh, from the that CCT is also here, trenches, and it comes from this side. We are regulating people to uh, use that uh, water slowly, slowly, uh, using drip irrigations and various systems, uh, using good practices in uh, their fields, uh, so that water will maintain uh, in their wells. One acre uh, area uh, here, we planted these uh, mulberry plants. Oh, this is mulberry plantation to feed the silkworms. We only chop them and bring it to the, for the uh, silkworms. In this farmer cup, we can understand that people are using up the chemicals, chemicals and chemicals. But our scientists guided them, not only chemical increase your yield, but the prevention things which is very necessary in the farming. So prevention is better than cure. Huh? So uh, many farmers adopt that technologies, natural pesticides, farm traps, they use the, the sticky traps. So they do preventive activities are done in very large scale and definitely the use of the chemical is reduced. The chemical fertilizers, insecticides are definitely is reduced which helps to increase the production also. Stay tuned for the next episode of India's Water Revolution 2023 where we visit another village that participated in the Pani Foundation's Water Cup and Farmers' Cup competitions and change their fortunes from poverty to prosperity. Are you ready to transform deserts, create lush backyards, and feed communities? In my almost 30 years as a permaculture designer traveling the world, I've put everything I learned into Oregon State University's online permaculture design course, or PDC. The PDC and PDC Pro are the ultimate ways to begin mastering permaculture. Me and my team guide you through over 20 assignments with more than 100 hours of top quality video lectures and resources, all focused on developing your own property or project throughout the course. You'll get personalized feedback from a dedicated instructor in a small group setting. People are always asking me, how can I be part of the solution? This is your starting point. Check the link below for upcoming courses and join us in creating a better world for everyone. See you in class.